Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining, joining us today on this Lunch and Learn webinar, where we're going to take a quick look at what kinds of graphical uh, representations can be used in ARCHICAD uh, to communicate both your project ideas and then technical detail uh, about the project at later stages. Uh, since we are, uh, uh, since not everyone is currently using ARCHICAD, let's take a quick look at the concepts we are using in ARCHICAD here so everyone's uh, familiar with the piece of software uh, that we're looking at right now. Uh, so in ARCHICAD, we uh, use what we call the virtual building concept, where we build a little virtual model uh, of the building that is to be built, uh, which is a one-to-one -one virtual representation uh, of the project uh, and contains all sorts of information, both visual and non-visual, uh, for, uh, for the representation of the model. Uh, all of our 2D projections come from this 2D model, uh, come from this 3D model, uh, and are generated by ARCHICAD itself. Uh, and these can use a, a great variety of styles, um, and this is what we're going to take a look at today. Uh, just so you know what you're looking at while I'm uh, driving the software here, on the right-hand side here uh, is what we call the navigator. This is where I access all the parts of the model. Uh, so some of these are direct views onto the model, which is what we call a viewpoint. And then I'll be using layouts, uh, which are little virtual pieces of paper, uh, to show you the uh, representational methods. Uh, all of our viewpoints uh, have been set up in this project to include as much detail as possible. Uh, and then we'll be using uh, view options to filter uh, these uh, viewpoints uh, to show just exactly what we want to show on those particular viewpoints. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's get started. Uh, so normally your project will, will start with your client, where you'll need to communicate your ideas um, uh, to your client uh, uh, to, to basically represent your, your design uh, and uh, present it for consultation. Uh, the simplest method of doing this uh, is just a flat uh, drawing uh, of an elevation or a section uh, or, or even a floor plan. Uh, we created this very colorful uh, conceptual elevation uh, from this building view. These are direct views onto the model, so they're completely live. Whenever the model changes, all of these views will change automatically. Uh, so we've created this view, uh, and this is basically a direct view onto the viewpoint uh, uh, of, uh, of the model. Uh, so we've created an elevation, and then we used the model uh, display settings uh, in the elevations controls uh, to create uh, this colorful elevation. Uh, so we're using uh, the own non-shaded surfaces, for example, for uncut elements, uh, and then we decided to actually include the grind level in here as well, uh, using its own cut fields to represent where the grind is uh, going to be for this project. Uh, if we move on a little bit further, uh, we have created this very rough sketch uh, of the design as well in 3D. Uh, we have achieved this uh, look uh, by combining two different rendering styles from within ARCHICAD. Uh, so using the creative image, imaging tools available from the document menu here, uh, you can use one of three rendering engines available to you in ARCHICAD. Uh, one of these is the internal rendering engine. And we've used the internal rendering engine to create the colors that you see in this image. Uh, so that's what's, uh, that's what's responsible for creating all the colored surfaces in this image. And then we used that rendering as a background to a sketch render image, which is another rendering engine available to you, uh, to overlay these sketch lines onto this uh, drawing to create this very rough uh, sketch idea uh, sort of drawing that is presentable to your uh, client. Uh, we have also used the sketch engine with significantly different settings to create a much more detailed view uh, of the proposed building. Uh, so this will, this will generate uh, these almost hand-drawn uh, lines. Uh, we used the QNR uh, preset uh, and combined it with 3D cutaways uh, to, to create this uh, very nice and fine drawing uh, of the building. We can achieve this using both axonometric and perspective uh, projections, uh, and they'll have uh, different outcomes uh, as you would expect those. Uh, and then we can also create these uh, very graphically rich 
uh, almost photograph-like uh, images uh, from our conceptual stage designs as well. Uh, we use the built-in Cine Render Engine uh, in ARCHICAD to create this elevation. Uh, first, we set the elevation up uh, using the axonometric projection in the 3D window. Uh, all you need to do that is right-click on your 3D window tab and then use the projection settings dialog uh, to set up uh, an axonometric projection. And then we use the Cine Render Engine to render uh, this image uh, from uh, the axonometric projection. Uh, a very brief trick that you can apply here, uh, in order to make your rendering quicker and yet appear more lifelike, to have an environment uh, reflected in your windows, you can use the uh, environment channel built into all of your surfaces. If you enable that, you can simply pick an image that will then be visible uh, wherever a surface is reflective. And that's how we achieved uh, these reflections in these two windows without a lot of calculative effort uh, to deal with, uh, uh, to having to deal with and then wait for that to render. Uh, so once you've communicated your ideas to your client, uh, it normally comes to time to actually uh, create a, a playing application package uh, from your designs. Uh, whilst your design will naturally progress through these stages, we've uh, excluded that from this webinar because we're uh, concentrating on uh, graphic styles today. Uh, so if I flip over to a different page, uh, which is our playing application package, if you like, uh, you can see that we. this is a significantly different way of uh, producing drawings. We're still using the exact same viewpoints uh, created from a model. So this elevation here is the ex basically the same elevation that you've seen on the client presentation uh, sheet just beforehand. Uh, only this uses a different set of uh, view settings. Uh, along the bottom here, uh, whenever I'm at the viewpoint, so if I activate my elevation view here, uh, whenever I'm at the viewpoint, I can pick different kinds of filters uh, that will then, be, then apply to this particular viewpoint. Uh, so if I'd like to create another planning drawing from this particular uh, uh, view, the first thing I do is apply a planning layer combination, which I've prepared previously. This is only used to filter the content that's being shown on the drawing here. Uh, and then I can use the planning model view options and my planning graphic overrides to change what the model looks like. Uh, it's the exact same model, it's just being shown differently uh, so you can interact with uh, these filters uh, to then create these views later on. Again, these are live views onto the uh, model, so if the model changes, these will update automatically. Uh, we have used the exact same uh, methods to create these planning, uh, planning application uh, floor plans as well. Uh, so we are just looking at the floor plan and then we use these graphical overrides uh, to fill up the uh, walls with this solid uh, background fill instead of showing all the construction detail that has been included uh, in, uh, uh, in the model otherwise. Uh, we can automatically generate any one of these views at any point uh, from the uh, from the model. So, for example, uh, I have also generated a section here uh, which contains information uh, for the planning department so they have an idea of what this building will uh, actually look like and how it's going to be built. Uh, once uh, we dealt with the planning application, it's time to actually create the construction drawings uh, from or model uh, and to create uh, construction documentation uh, steps uh, for this. Uh, so we've originally modeled the building uh, to include all this information and we have simply excluded uh, these details uh, at a later step uh, from the models. Uh, so for example, if you take a look at the floor plans here, uh, these floor plans use a different layer combination. Uh, as opposed to the um, build, uh, the uh, planning application drawings, uh, because we create a different uh, layer combination to hide the furniture, for example, uh, so that we are not no longer communicating the function of a room 
uh, by placing furniture in it. However, we wanted to keep the uh, uh, the fixtures and fittings uh, in the building to show where those will be located. Um, we have also changed the pen set that's associated to the drawing uh, to exclude color uh, from uh, from the views. So, for example, if I wanted to uh, display this drawing uh, in full color, for example, all I need to do is change the pen set and each element has their associated pen numbers, uh, so they, they simply override their color display uh, using this method. Uh, we have also created a different uh, model view options, and again, a different set of uh, uh, graphic overrides uh, to deal with these. Uh, graphic overrides uh, are essentially a set of rules uh, that can be applied selectively to elements. Uh, and using these graphic overrides, I can say that I'd like, for example, in the case of these uh, 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 building regulations drawings, uh, that I'd like all zoned fields uh, to be transparent uh, so that the uh, markup of the rooms do not contain color, uh, they just simply contain zone stamp that displays the area and the name of the room. Uh, that is relevant to that particular uh, um, option. Moving forward, uh, we can use the exact same settings uh, available on uh, floor plans or on building sections that have been generated from the model as well. Uh, we didn't do any uh, particular drawing or so any particular extra drawing on these views. These are direct viewpoints taken from the uh, from the model, uh, so these can be generated uh, fairly quickly uh, and easily using these methods. Uh, if we move a little bit further on, uh, there are different kinds, uh, different methods to communicate this construction information as well. Uh, so, for example, using a 3D document. Uh, we can create these axonometric or, or isometric uh, projections from our 3D model to, com to communicate, for example, particular uh, junctions in the building or particular details uh, that we want uh, to create in the element. Uh, so to create one of these 3D documents, for example, all I need to do is right-click on the 3D window and say that I'd like to create a new 3D document from it. And then if we take a look at the 3D document itself, you'll see that these are still related uh, elements. So when I select this wall, this is actually a wall. It's just being displayed differently to me. Uh, so we've created this from an axonometric projection, and then we use the settings for the uncut elements to be filled with their uniform surface. And that's what has removed the detail uh, from our walls, for example, and that's why all the walls are displayed as a solid color. Uh, so if I right-click on the... Uh, uh, 3D document in my navigator, I can take a look at what uh, the 3D document settings uh, which uh, describe how this drawing is being uh, drawn for me. Uh, so as you can say, see, under the cut elements settings here, uh, I'm telling ARCHICAD to display all the cut fields, so all the detailed information that's included uh, in these walls. Uh, so that's why ARCHICAD draws the insulation uh, hatching where, where there's insulation, and the wood grain hatching where I'm cutting through uh, a supporting joist in the first floor structure here. I have then simply used uh, labels to point to the appropriate uh, constructions here to display the already included information in there to create this nicely detailed and very easy to read uh, drawing about how this building is going to be constructed. Um, we have also created one of these 3D cutaways uh, that are available uh, direct from the model. We can create 3D cutaways with fair ease. If I go back to the 3D model here uh, and navigate a little bit around the 3D model, uh, I have my 3D cutaway uh, uh, button available to me in my standard toolbar here. Uh, so if I wanted to create uh, 3D cutaways, once the feature is enabled, these little handles around the screen will simply let me pull in cutting planes against my building. Uh, so if I click on one of these little scissors here, uh, pulling the handle, I can simply cut towards the building 
uh, to create a cut there. Uh, I can then also create custom cutting planes simply by clicking on the surface against which I'd like to create a cut. And then click the finalize button to tell ARCHICAD that I'm done with these changes. Creating these 3D cutting planes uh, also happens on the floor plans and sections and elevations. So if I'm not happy with where the cutting plane is, uh, I can move it very precisely uh, using my floor plan. So if I wanted to cut away just where the uh, steps uh, are shown, I can simply move the cutting plane in uh, my floor plan view here. And by the time I get back to uh, my 3D window, uh, the cutting planes have rearranged themselves uh, to show the cut for me. Uh, the last style uh, I'd like to show you today is simply drawing uh, the detail uh, section here. Uh, so we've taken this detail uh, directly from this section uh, that has been generated by ARCHICAD and then we used custom library objects uh, to add extra detail uh, that is otherwise not drawn uh, by ARCHICAD which is a very easy uh, method of operating with details. Uh, so if I open up this detail uh, for editing here, you'll see that the blocks, for example, and, and the mason block work are custom objects uh, and they make detailing very easy. So if I wanted to remove some of the uh, masonry blocks, all I need to do is resize uh, and move these hotspots here uh, to operate with uh, these views. Uh, so to recap, um, the most important part is to set up all your originating viewpoints to include as much detail as you ever wanted to, to display. Uh, if I go into the elevation settings here, for example, you'll see that the elevation itself actually generates color information because I've set the uncut elements to display their own surface color using the non-shaded options. I can use these tools as well to include some shadows on, on an elevation if I wanted to, which also adds a very nice uh, uh, level of detail uh, for these elevations. And then I simply use filtering settings down here uh, to exclude some of this information or to override some of these settings later on. I'm using the vectorial 3D hatching option here, uh, which is responsible for displaying the roof tiles and the bricks on the wall. Uh, and we can even have transparency enabled uh, on these uh, elevations if we wanted to see what's behind transparent objects uh, in the model. Uh, it is very easy and quick uh, to, to draw these simply by checking for a checkbox uh, so, so you don't actually have to uh, draw all those details as well. And as you can see, the uh, cutting plane is also available uh, on my elevations and sections here. Uh, so this pretty much covers the content uh, that we've planned out for today. Uh, so thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll be, we will be running uh, another webinar in two weeks' time uh, that will be on how to create topographic uh, models. So mostly on using the mesh tool to create your terrain uh, for your model. Uh, so thanks for joining us. Uh, if you have any questions, just type it into the question box uh, and we'll be happy to answer those uh, right now. Uh, otherwise, uh, have a great day.